end. And that, that is the conclusion they, um, they came up with with their research. So, uh, okay. So uh, moving on to our country, <clears throat> the way we sort of wanted it to go along or how it was theorized in, for example, this earlier framework from 2004 was that after the sort of uh, collapse and degradation of the Soviet system, you would have a period of stabilization and reform, and eventually uh, the economy would start to innovate endogenously, innovate on its own. So we have this uh, mm -hmm. sort of economy where innovation is produced endogenously. However, that has not happened, and uh, it's worthwhile exploring the reasons for why it hasn't happened. Um, so what we want ideally is something like this, an innovation culture, somewhere where not just scientists, but also entrepreneurs and people in general feel open about expressing themselves, innovating, and where that is the exception, uh, th that is the norm rather than the exception, where that is encouraged and uh, expected happening, right? So there's also this distinction between entrepreneur who starts something new, for example, a new company, a new business and so on, and someone who's an intra intrapreneur, someone who goes into an established organization or system and tries to change that, so it comes up with something innovative in that sense. Um, it turns out, however, that uh, uh, creating this innovation culture and getting from uh, creating knowledge to actually using that knowledge is, is, is much more difficult and layered than uh, people might expect. Of course, everyone knows about uh, education and research and how it's necessary to provide funding for that, but there's a whole other uh, set of layers below that. So how it's legal environment uh, where, you know, things like how, how easy it is to, uh, for instance, uh, receive funding or set up a new business uh, systems of finance that, that that involves that as well, how easy it is to get uh, public funding, private funding, uh, funding from the European Union or other international organizations and so on. And uh, at the top, at the bottom here, there's the entrepreneurial environment. And this is where the culture really comes in. How, how, uh, how encouraged or how unencouraged you are as an entrepreneur or researcher to uh, innovate and come up with new new solutions. And as we can see, unfortunately, uh, this is somewhere where Latvia lags behind, of course, countries like Sweden, but also behind its peer countries, the other Baltic states, unfortunately. And that comes down to, in my opinion, all of these layers, but the, the entrepreneurial environment is something that uh, we, we focus on particularly here. So we have, again, all of these layers to innovation. And if we don't see innovation happening at the rate that we want to, there could be a num number of reasons for it, but the, the, the ones we see are above on the top. We just see that there's a low business birth rate. There's nothing happening. But if you look beneath that, you see that there's uh, things like static business practices, management, culture, and things like that, and you know, strategic dynamics or lack of uh, general strategy. Uh, in, in, in the state that you're talking about. But again, it, it all, all very often comes back to how uh, this is done in, in a cultural sense, how, how, how this is managed on a day-to-day -day basis. And these are some of the deeper reasons that you need to look into it. For, for example, um, again, a, an older framework from the World Bank in 2006, this idea of a national innovation system that the government comes in from the from the top sort of and uh, creates a strategy and the framework has strategic objectives of how innovation is, is is meant to be done what are we focusing on what's the what are our primary uh, objectives and so on and from that we have uh, a bit of a shift towards a more of an ecosystems uh, framework and it's a bit hard to see here but basically all of these are different ways to look at innovation ecosystems, whether it's through the lens of entrepreneurial abilities or attitudes or aspirations. But again, everywhere, uh, especially with ecosystems, culture is very, very important because the, these are these are systems that are not controlled hierarchically from, from the top. So you can't just 
legislate it. You can't. It, it, there has to be some sort of a voluntary shared agreement, right? For this for this to work, there's there are many different stakeholders and things like that. And again, culture is something that either facilitates that or doesn't. Um, and again, culture is broken down here uh, through different things. These are the causal factors that we we, we often see with our own eyes. How how uh, HR practices are done, for example, how leadership and communication is done. Uh, but also, uh, there's uh, you know obviously the organizational culture, more of a holistic view. And then there's outcomes of that, the things you see, the teamwork, the motivation, the satisfaction, and also how uh, how this reflects on the, the thing we talked about about the innovation culture the how how ideas and actions are are done and how how innovation is practiced and unfortunately in all of these all of these places we still see the, the soviet influence we see that organizational culture particularly is 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 influenced by these uh, you know that this legacy of of of, uh, of the soviet union that we, we still experience and that is unfortunately also uh being transcribed into the the newer generation unfortunately but that is something that we certainly need to uh, study more and that's something that has only recently been caught on as uh, it's not just so it's not just a funding issue it's also an issue of, of culture fundamentally and it's something that we have to acknowledge so the early conclusions from the from the folks who did this is that there's basically two need, two things need to be done in broad strokes. One is that we need like uh, some you know top down interventions that requires political will and that requires investments in education and space science and research and I think things that have already been touched upon today on multiple occasions. But also uh, from sort of the middle layer or from the bottom up, you have to pull in more talent. For, for space and innovation, that's where the immigration comes in, but also uh, attracting students from the Western world, from Europe, from maybe North America as well, people who don't have this sort of uh, post-Soviet legacy, and through that we can somewhat dilute and change the culture in a more positive direction than, than, than it is today, right? So there needs to, there definitely needs to be a political structural change and in investments and, and ways to, to do that, but also you need to change the culture uh, to, to a fundamental degree. Um, finally, ending this presentation, um, Arnold already spoke about uh, Space LV, the new the new platform that we have that uh, Professor Poing is going to be leading, and that's a very positive development towards uh, making this uh, this country a space ecosystem. Just touching upon something that I've been involved in recently. Uh, again, uh, something that uh, Photon Extenders is now involved in is this new uh, initiative called the Euro Space Hub. And basically, it's a digital platform, the main purpose of which is to connect different stakeholders in the space innovation you know, ecosystem. So it's not just researchers, it's a, a lot of people who are involved in this. Uh, so it's a place for them to collaborate, to share ideas, to uh, put up resources like research papers that are like, uh, you know, maybe webinars or like mm -hmm. some, some lecture series that they've been involved in. Uh, also a place to find people, you know, you, you want to find some, some researcher for a particular problem or issue that you have, that's the place to do it. And also, yeah, uh, not just individual resources from different countries and organizations, but also they want to create a more comprehensive uh, structured education or learning system for not just science but also entrepreneurs and finally as i mentioned it's not it's a very interdisciplinary initiative it's not just scientists it's not just business people or venture capitalists or entrepreneurs there's for example the, the conference that's coming up in Ibiza. there's a contest for artists and musicians to create art that is involved uh, that, that is somehow related to space and the, but the whole the whole point of the project is that it's not just science is obviously very important in it, but for for space innovation to really kick off, you need to involve all the all the stakeholders that are involved in it because space innovation is probably one of the most important fields uh, we have for the twenty first century. So, yeah, that, that's what I that's what I wanted to conclude on. The the, the 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 to create an innovation system it's not just an issue of funding it's also an issue of uh culture and how you do these things on a day-to-day -day personal level and unfortunately we still have that soviet influence 
And, but there's ways to mitigate that. And there's also new exciting initiatives that we can take on here in Latvia to uh, make this into an innovation ecosystem. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. Questions, please. <laughs> yeah. Is it the positive impacts? I mean, young yeah. <laughs> people now have not have been brought up in the yeah. in Latvia. Sure. So, so you still see that with the people who has the young people, or is it um, the impact more for the people who actually had the training in school in the Soviet system? I, I mean, I, from a personal perspective, I would definitely say that it's more uh, pronounced in the older generations than in the new ones, but. The, the 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 unfortunate thing is that um like again from personal experience i see many of the very brightest people just going away right they, they just the, the people who could actually change things uh from say from my age roughly right yep. they, they very often they have simply better opportunities elsewhere right and it's well, but it's also so it's not just serving the system that the one who wants to change it. <laughs> it's it's very it's a, it, that that is an additional difficulty in all of this. Yes, that, yeah, that, maybe that, it will help. Uh, uh, several studies uh, they fix that uh, that there still exists this uh, post post Soviet uh, post. mindset, yeah. uh, and it it goes through through generations, and that we see that it's so difficult to decrease for example corruption yeah uh, the shadow economy uh, the uh, willingness to, to, to go over the uh, the, the uh, legal environment yeah to make these illegal things yeah so so known uh, known tax payments and, and, and many such such things what we see and it doesn't matter whether the person is uh, uh, Latvian or, or or Russian or Polish or or so uh, born, for example, in Latvia. Yeah, but I'm, I'm can't tell that everybody is such way. There are very good examples. Is gradually turning, but these problems exist in Estonia, in Poland, in Eastern Germany. You see also that these differences, uh, Osties and Westies, still exist. Yeah, and 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 it's very difficult. It's easy by one generation to, to uh, push them in. It's very difficult to go out. And therefore, uh, there is no clear question even how, how to, to solve them. That's uh, the serious thing. And uh, we are, I would say, we are, are going just to fix the problem, to make first conclusion, and then to see what we can uh, at least avoid in this space ecosystem. Right. So, no, the, uh, the, the system inertia is very strong. And if you just if you live in this sort of environment where corruption or you know things of the, that old system of management is the norm, then that's what you're going to internalize as well, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, anything else? Yeah. Next yeah. question. I just um, just going off of this, I was curious to you about because I was reading about like you were saying um, a lot of what we have. They're really good at what they do, and so they go out for them and they have better opportunities. And I read about this and how it's happening a lot in art and design, where artists and designers were leaving and doing their studies elsewhere. But now they're seeing a resurgence of these Latvians coming back to Latvia and you know giving back to the country. Do you see this in other ways too, or have you really noticed that people who leave tend to come back and bring their expertise and knowledge with them? Um, well, I mean, uh, some some people definitely do come back, and you know, I, I might eventually go away for a couple of years, study elsewhere, for example, and then and then coming coming back up. You know, th there is that as well. Um, I haven't seen uh, like any research or maybe a large change in it recently, mm -hmm. but uh, but but maybe I haven't. I, I simply haven't seen it, but. Um, I, I think there is some of that, and also you have to uh, perhaps take into account that a lot of people left during the financial crisis. They saw other opportunities elsewhere, and like some people are just born there. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, but, but you are right. For example, the only unicorn, mm -hmm. Printful, is the really good uh, case. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Mr. Liberts, he went to USA. Yeah worked there and came back uh, with a nice idea and developed it in, in a billion uh, billion uh, cents company. We will see the model of company. 
who is your question? Yeah, so if you make a question in, in here, you say you interview 10 students from university, how many of them would say that, that yeah, I, I may want to, to start a company? Um, what is your guess? Is it one or 10 or five? Or... Any any random set of students? Like, yeah. Um, I think it's on the lower side because again, like people, uh, there's a, there, there there is that lack of innovation culture where that is the norm, sort of, right? Sure. And, and what you have instead is often where where it, it's it's almost kind of self-enforcing, right? If you see that no one around you is doing anything, you kind of assume that there's a good reason for it. You know, there's all these difficulties and problems and uh, legal obstacles that you have to overcome to even start a company that's much it's much easier to do that in let's say estonia or some uh, western european country where you have more accelerators more funding available uh, easier to do it legally especially if you're a, a citizen of the european union and so on so there's a self-enforcing um, quality to it as well yeah, and that's exactly what i was supposed to say because one thing what happened in finland was examples because it started from gaming. So, so we started having the millionaires from the gaming, people started mm -hmm. believing themselves, thinking that, okay, I can really create a company which will become mm -hmm. a leading company in the world. That leading companies in the world are uh, interested to buy and so on. So the number of people who are now, if you go to the Finnish university and ask, it has increased in the past mm -hmm. 10, 15 years dramatically that people think that, yeah, I might want to start a company. So when I started my company, I would say that one or two persons who who had said that, yeah, I want to start a company. Now it's over over, mm -hmm. over five. Right. So good mm -hmm. examples, mm -hmm. and when you have them, play, put them, make them visible, mm -hmm. so that people can see that hey, come on, I know that guy, and he started a company. I know that guy, and he started a company. Yeah, and that will create these kind of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, I think that's the other core of the issue uh, that we have. That we, it's sort of a marketing problem because Absolutely. we have we have startups, right? So not just not just Printful, but uh, a number of other very interesting ones. But they they're not visible enough, and they're not promoted enough. And again, that's where in part the Euro Space Hub could come come in. Maybe not in Latvia, where that is, but also in, in other countries where you can at least help these. Uh, companies through fi finding partners and so on help them succeed and once they do succeed then you can then then it'll, then it'll be on news and so on and you can uh, yeah and, uh, and they are usually their young generation they are saying that we are proud to pay our taxes and, and so on they are not kind of people who are going to go away and so on so okay. they are really kind of examples for the young yeah. okay there's a conversation in Baldone. Okay. <laughs> The uh, Soviet system is a very, very simple approach. One approach is uh, you are still the system is stupid, you need to fight, you need to do better. Other approach was the stupidly to, to fight the yeah. system. You need to use this opportunity to how to, uh, to use this stupidity in your favor. It was precisely approach, and there were two parts of society. The second one dominated by the system survived so long. And of course, a lot of people were lost out uh, fighting. And but after the uh, Arab Arab country fall down, we are building capitalists. We are allowed to build private companies. The easiest way how to build the company, how to be rich, is uh, to make corrupt business. It's much easier than to make other things. And this approach that uh, you need to use stupidity or weakness of system in your favor. Is still dominating, and unfortunately, what I I agree, the younger generation will grow up. And they will change mindset. You know, they will see another thing. And so, what of still be helping former council of people? Twenty seconds. Okay.